invite us to stand as that is being done. And good afternoon again as we welcome you to this the funeral service of Brother Kendall John Robertson on behalf of the pastor members, board of management, and uh, members of this church, my own family. I wish to express deepest sympathy to the Robertson Dowers family on the loss of their loved one. And we pray this afternoon that indeed God will continue to strengthen you as you go through this period of uh, bereavement. I want you to remain standing as we have prayer. Let us pray. Eternal Father, indeed you are God. And today we praise you and we lift your name on high. In spite of the circumstances around us at this point, for God, we still call you Father. Because there are none like you throughout this universe. And we thank you, God, that nothing is happening without you. For you are indeed the Almighty, your powerful God. And you are indeed the God of yesterday, today, and forever. And even now, God, as we come before you we want to bring this meeting into your hands even at this point heavenly father that the holy spirit may take full control and that you may comfort your people in a mark and special way help us to realize that that is not the end for you are still the resurrection and the life and we can still look to you in the end of time to bring all this sickness and death and sin to an everlasting end even now, O oh God, may you just take full control. Bless us indeed with your Holy Spirit presence. Help that everything may be done in order and according to your will. Bless the family members and all of us here, visitors and friends, as we come together, O oh God, to pay our tribute to the late John Robertson Starkey. Take full control, O oh God, now. And may Holy Spirit fill this place, I pray, in Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Okay, we can all uh, be seated. Okay, we bend our voice as we sing this wonderful hymn, Is All It My Soul? It's the first song on your pursuit here. Let us stand as we sing this wonderful hymn.
Amen. Let us be seated. Okay, we're going to allow the, the program to flow this evening. Just want to welcome Mr. Leacock. Honorable Leacock, glad to have you in the house this evening. And we are basically going to have our four scripture reading. And that will be done by Data, Kelly, and Robertson. So may the person come forth and, and do that, please. Good afternoon, everybody. The scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. And it reads, Behold, I show you a misery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last drum, in the for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall not be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, that is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the end of the scripture reading. We are now moving right into the open tribute. So the floor is open. Okay, we're into the open tribute segment. So let's see how quick you get this part start rolling. Good evening to everyone. Um, well, I could say you know, last week I wasn't feeling too well eh? because I bought this foot, taking some medication, and it was kind of a foot, but I said, What a pain and a pain because of the goodness of these children, ma'am. You see, the Robertson family and those children, for me, Robertson, I always have them in my heart because when I had my accidents, those two mothers were there for me. And this evening, I want to tell them they are not alone this evening. Christ is with them, because he said, He that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not weary. And because of um, Deaconess um, Miriam Robinson, I'm going to do one of our Baptist songs this evening on behalf of the family, okay? To do all. That chain, chain sends up life in trouble. I'm in a joy, suffering, my God shall save my
good afternoon to everyone. I would like, on behalf of myself and my husband, Mr. Omar Ambrose, to extend condolences to all the family and friends of the late Starkey as I was introduced to him. I want you to know that today God is with you and he is going to keep you in this your time of mourning. If I carried the gospel to the lost near and far, I will stand empty handed at God's judgment bar. But I did not relax until I've done all he asked lest I should leave behind an unfinished task oh you have run you've run in the ways and you have come Every faith, these words are long to hear my Savior say. And when my life on earth is past, there's just one thing, the Lord I ask, and don't let me leave. Behind an unfinished task If I have wronged my brother And if I have wounded a friend Lord, give me courage, precious Jesus To make and when I will reach, reach to glory and sing glory, glory at last. Oh, don't let me leave behind and unfinished eyes. Oh, you have run, you have run in the way. And you have kept every faith of the Lord I long to hear my Savior say. And when my life on earth is past, there's just one thing the Lord I like. Don't let me leave behind and on the much but I'll try and sing okay I'll make up okay many years I've been looking for a place to call home but I failed here to find it so I must travel on I don't care for my mansion on earth's sand Lord, build me a cabin in the corner of glory land Lord, build me a cabin in the corner of glory land On the shade of the tree of life that's in the endless land Where I can just head in Joseph and Jesus' hand 
Yeah, this is this is my brother, the lion in this coffin. I did not get to tell him how I really feel about him, and it hurt me today. But he knew that I love him. But that's not good enough for me because I wanted to say it to, my, to him. But to all of you here today, all your families, know that I love you all. From the bottom of my heart, I love you all. So if you guys go tomorrow, know that I love you. Saki was a very, very quiet person. You know, every time he called me, he said he want something which I was obliged to give. But it was a joy just hearing him and seeing him. You know, he would call me, he would give me, he have this little smile and that he gives on his face every time. You know, it just brings me so much joy to see my brother and I wish that everyone could just call me and give me that smile. But I feel honored today to know that my brother lived a good life and to hear so many good things from the villagers about him and what a big heart he had. Nothing was too much for him to give. And it made me feel good and feel proud to know that I have someone like that in my corner. I just want to thank God for him 
And I know that God is looking after his soul right now. This body this is just a body lying here. But his soul lives on. When we all die, the body goes in the ground. But the soul, the soul doesn't see the ground. It goes back where it come from. Until that day. When, when, the, when the Lord will say, well done. That I hope that it says to all of us, well done, my child. Well done. Come on home. I believe we can close off the open tribute at this time. Anyone else? If not, then we will sing this, our second hymn, All Where My Savior Leads Me. We'll start as we sing this wonderful song.
that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, God will also bring with him through Jesus those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the Lord's word that who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed. His presence at all over those who have previously fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud cry or summons, with the shout of an archangel, and with the blast of the trumpet of God. And those who have departed this life in Christ will rise again first. Then we, the living ones who remain, shall simultaneously be caught up and along in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always, we shall be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort, comfort and encourage one another with these words. And this is the end of the scripture reading. We'll now move into the family tribute segment. Family tribute segment. Okay, we'll have that one later on. Okay, this time we'll have a special song by Brother Joel Thomas. One, two. Good afternoon, everybody. I came here with one song in mind, but while I'm sitting here, I decided to do a different song. You see, Starkey, as, as his brother Jerome said, Starkey was a very quiet guy. You know, and I mean, all my years growing up in Riley, pitching marbles, spinning top, riding cat, scooter, and all these things. Real people, mango trees, click play, um, cricket, kickings, and whatever, you know, games, while wrong at them times. You know, Saki, I never see Saki get in a fight with anybody. One day, I mean, I'm not here to give a chill, but I'm just saying something because, as I said, Saki was a, a good, a good guy. I mean, everybody have a downside of them, but for me, Saki was a good guy. One day, we went to the river to fishing. And we used to make those boats with, with um, umbrella board and get this piece of glass and go in the water and part the water to see whether macaca or crayfish, whatever it was. And... Vin, we call him Biggie. Saki saw a macaque and Biggie got mud in the water and the macaque run. And Saki took the gun and said, Boy, I will shoot you. Know? And from the time I hear that, boom, in Biggie chest. <laughs> the umbrella boat sticking. <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you, I, I was the one who pulled out the, the umbrella boat. Saki felt away the gun and realized the gun didn't go so far and go back to the gun and felt the gun far far. <laughs> Well, trust me, you don't want to hear what happened after that. Biggie went home and sister went to Miss Perrier. And Robert could tell them, they said, when Miss Perrier started to beat her one spot, one spot and you know what to do? Start to get some blows. <laughs> you know, when I thought about that story for Saki, I'm going to tell the truth. And, you know, you know, sometimes as children, your mother beat you like that and you want to pay back, back and son. Saki was with that. Saki was a humble guy was an obedient boy. You know, and I just pray for the family that we all can just live on, live a good life, set an example for the children so that they can follow and put their life in God's hand. Because one day, our name will be called. And, you know, we have to answer. There is peace in the valley. Something. <laughs> For a long time, I'm so weary, but I must overlook till the Lord shall come and hold me away and to run where the moon 
It's so bright And the lamb is the light And the dark night is as plain As the day Oh, oh yeah Oh, yeah, baby Take a song with me In the morning Oh, yeah Oh, yeah Oh, yeah, baby Oh, yeah wonderful indeed. At this time, I'll introduce you to the platform personals. To my right, we have one of our senior elders of the Visham Seven Adventist Church, his elder Lester Noel. And just behind me, we have the first elder of the Visham Seven Adventist Church, Elder Michael Delplash. And I'm your humble servant, Elder Rohan Robertson, one of the elders as well in this church. I believe we just will have to move on with the program. And then we will have the family tributes as well as the eulogy after the sermon. That's how we will have to do it at this time. Not the usual, but I guess we have to go with the flow to keep things going. So at this time, we'll have the first seller of the Evisham Seven Adventist Church, a man who loved God, one who can write to divide the word of God, one who, I must say, is a proud Christian, 
And today we are happy to have him here to present to you, I may say, the spoken word. I know the Lord has given him, you say, a word for us. It's not for the deceased, he's already dead. It's for us who are alive. So I want us to give him more undivided attention as he brings to us the spoken word this evening. So I give to you Elder Michael Deplesh. Thank you very much, Brother Robertson. Let me say a pleasant good afternoon to everyone again. And uh, again, let me express deepest sympathy to the Robertson family, to his daughter and his siblings. And I trust this afternoon that the words, I almost said few, but I am not certain they would be few. But the words that you would hear this afternoon would bring some comfort to your hearts. Let us bow our heads as we go to God in prayer. Gracious God and eternal Father, as we look through your words at this time, we ask that your divine presence would lead and bring comfort and give us the assurance that all is not lost, but there is hope for those who die in Christ. Take full control now, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to also welcome those who are viewing us online. I trust that you will also receive a blessing this afternoon. I've captioned the message this afternoon, The Final Judgment. Not really a message that you want to hear at a funeral service, Brother Marlon. So I just want to tell you, don't worry. You would be okay if you make the right choice. So you can be at ease. The purpose of this message today is to assure us that Satan, sin, and death would one day be no more. Are you hearing me today? Satan, sin, and death itself will one day be destroyed. You know, it is disheartening to know that Satan, who is the originator of all this mess, the sin that he has plunged this universe into, is still roaming the earth. He is still reigning in the earth. While human beings are dying, that doesn't seem fair to me. Every day we are having funerals as a consequence of our sin. But Satan, who caused this in the first instant, he is there roaming the earth. Peter describes him as our adversary, walking about up and down in the earth, seeking whom he may devour. I want to let us know that Satan is seeking to destroy God's creation, each and every one of us. But I am here today to assure us that one of these days, Satan would be destroyed. I want to raise three points with us here this afternoon. The first one is that death came upon the human race because of Adam's choice to disobey God and sin. So because of Adam's choice to disobey God, he sinned, and as a consequence of his disobedience, sin was passed upon all men. God indeed would have warned Adam and Eve about the deceiver, Satan himself. 
He also outlined what would be the consequences of their disobedience. In Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, we read God's instructions to Adam. He says, I've given you everything, every tree in the garden. You can eat freely. There was nothing that Adam and Eve were lacking in the garden of Eden. But God placed a limitation. He says, this one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will not eat from it. For in the day that you eat of that fruit, you shall surely die. And as the story went on, sad to say, that Adam sinned against God. That is why we are here today. And just in case you did not know, one of these days, you and me would be lying there where our brother is today if Jesus doesn't come quickly. As we look back, Sin and death have reigned for long, but they will not reign forever. It will not be forever. Adam's mistakes have plunged us into this situation, but thanks be to God that there is a way for lost humanity today. And my second point is that God, in his mercy, has given man an opportunity to obtain salvation. Are you hearing me today? God, in his mercy, has given man an opportunity to obtain salvation. And so even though we have been plunged into sin, there is a way. My friends, this was no easy feat. In order to accomplish salvation on behalf of man, Christ had to stand where Adam stood. He took on human nature, not his sinful nature. He came as Adam came. Adam was created a perfect being. And God allowed them to be tempted so that they can withstood the tests. So that they can rightfully earn the eternity. But Adam failed and so now the second Adam, as the Bible puts it, puts it must come and stand where Adam stood. So he had to take on sinful uh, that, sorry, he had to take on human nature. He became man. He subjected himself to, the temp to be tempted by Satan, whom he had already defeated in heaven. Revelation chapter 2 verses 7 to 9 gives an account of that uh, incident. The Bible tells us that there was war in heaven. Michael and his angel fought. And the dragon fought and his angels. But they were defeated. Thank God they were defeated. And at that battle, Satan and his angels were cast out to the earth. Because there was no more room found in heaven for them. But in order for Christ to secure our salvation, he must defeat Satan as man. He defeated him already in heaven as God, but on earth, he must defeat Satan as man. And so as he came to this earth, he entered the ring with Satan. A bout that would go for seven rounds. It is man against angel. 
Christ against Satan. A matchup that was scheduled for seven rounds. Oh, picture with me as wrong one began. Satan tried to destroy Christ as a child. When Jesus was born, the wise men from the east came looking for this child. And they were inquiring and uh, Herod found out and, and he, he wanted to, to uh, kill this child. And he told the wise men to go and look for him. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I can go and worship him. But the wise men were warned in a dream not to return. And so they did not return. And so wrong one ended. Well, not quite ended, but they returned and the child was spared. But he was not satisfied. He went on and he destroyed all the male, males, the male children under the age of two, two and under. And that was wrong one. But Jesus went down to Egypt with his parents and he was spared. And so the battle raged on. And so we come to wrong two. After his baptism, Jesus went into the wilderness. There he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. There it was in his weak and feeble state. Satan again came and tempted him. And he threw three punches at Jesus. Oh yes, he was uh, hungry and he, he told Jesus, well, you can turn these stones into bread. And at every uh, accusation and uh, at every punch, Jesus had the word of God to give to him. Man shall not live by bread alone. Then he turned to Jesus with the second punch. Cast yourself down. And the Bible says that he will send his angels to bear you up. And so Jesus again met him. Head on with the scriptures. And then again Satan took him up and he showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Which in fact does not belong to him. Because God is our creator. And Satan desired one thing from Jesus. Just bow down and worship me. And I'll give you all of this. And there said Jesus dismissed him finally. And he said to him, get the hands from me, Satan. And so wrong, the two was completed. And Jesus was still the champion. And then wrong tree started there in the garden of Gethsemane. When Jesus realized that his time was at hand. That he is now about to face the biggest test. The biggest challenge. That is going to the cross to give his life on Calvary for sinners. And as he was there in the garden, he wrestled with God the Father. He prayed. Three times he interceded. Father, if it is possible, let this cup be moved from me. And as he prayed, there was sweat dropping down his cheeks. And the Bible tells us that they were as blood, drops of blood. It shows his agony, his pain. And here he was suffering for things that he did not do. But at the end of this bout round, Jesus got up. He says, nevertheless, not my will, 
but thy will be done. Jesus got up and his friends who were, support, who were supposed to be supporting him were asleep. He woke them up and he said, let us be going. And Satan will not rest. And as he went, uh, entered into wrong form, they arrested him. And they tried him before Caiaphas, the high priest. He was deserted by his disciples. He was falsely accused. He was physically and verbally abused by the mob. Denied by his own disciple Peter. Yet he answered not a word. The Bible tells us. Through all of this pain and suffering and agony. Jesus held his ground. Because he was determined to defeat Satan in this battle. Then round five ensued. Before Pilate the governor. They called for Barnabas the criminal. The one who was supposed to die. They called for him to be set free. When he asked, what must we do with Jesus? Oh, they shouted, crucify him. They said his blood would be upon us and upon our children. Oh, Pilate washed his hand, but still... He gave him over to the mob. The soldiers took him away to be crucified. They stripped him naked. They plaited a crown of thorns and placed it on his head. They whipped him. Everybody was seen to seem to have been having fun, and Satan was rejoicing. But Jesus endured it all. Then comes round six. They took him to Calvary. And they crucified him upon the cross. While he was there on the cross dying. The devil started a little whisper in the crowd. You are the son of God, you claim. You saved others. Well, now is the time for you to save yourself. Come down and show us who you are. But I want to let us know this afternoon, if Jesus had come down from the cross, all of us would have been lost. Oh, but he withstood all the embarrassment and the shame. And he stretched himself out on the cross. And he stayed there. For you and for me. And there Jesus died. On the cross. For our sins. When the soldiers came to check him. He was already dead. And so they took him down. And they placed him in a grave. They sealed up the grave. The soldiers guarded the grave with their lives because when he was alive, he said, destroy this temple and in three days, I'll raise it up. And so he was there lying in the grave. And so now we come to the final rung. This is the knockout punch. But you can imagine with me that Satan was prancing around. Yes, Satan was prancing around. He had Jesus where he wanted him to be. And you can imagine his hand in the air, rejoicing and celebrating. And then the conk started. One. Two, three, 
And on the third point, my brothers and sisters, Jesus arose from the grave and he said to Satan, Hold on, I am the resurrection and the life. I am he who was dead, but I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. My friends, on the cross of Calvary, Jesus paid a price for you and me. So that we would not have to suffer the eternal consequences of death. Just imagine that Christ had to endure the punishment that he pronounced on man for sin. Not for his sin, but for our sins. You see, the death of Jesus covers all of our sins right down from Adam to our day. His sacrifice is still sufficient to cleanse the sinner man from his sins. And so Jesus committed no sin, but he bore the sins of the world upon the cross of Calvary. So that we today could obtain salvation. I say glory, hallelujah. Praise to God. Then the final point I want to make today. Is that the final judgment. Will see the destruction of Satan. His angels. And all who chose to, to, choose to follow Satan. In this final judgment, death itself will be destroyed. Death itself will be cast in the lake of fire. When will this take place? We believe that Jesus Christ will come again to this world the second time. We're not speaking to Kendall. Kendall cannot hear us. He is not in heaven. He is dead. And so the message today, as our elder said earlier, is for those of us who are alive. And we are saying that one day to come, even death will be destroyed. We believe that Jesus will come again. He has gained the victory over Satan on the cross of Calvary. He has paved the way for sinners like you and me to obtain salvation. The choice obviously is ours. We choose how we are going to live our lives. We choose whether or not we are going to accept his salvation or we are going to follow in the footsteps of Satan. So we believe that Jesus will one day come again. And when Jesus returns the second time, those who choose to follow him, those who accepted his sacrifice for us on the cross of Calvary, would be taken to heaven to live and reign with him for 1,000 years. Isn't that amazing? Or oh, you're not excited about that? But for you. I say glory, hallelujah. 1,000 years in heaven. You know, the longest living man was Methuselah. And he lived for 969 years. But look at how God is good. The first installment of eternal life would be how many years? A thousand years. With all the carrying on of Satan, Christ says to him, take that. Methuselah only lived for 969 years. 
but we would be with Christ in heaven for one whole thousand years, longer than any human being has ever lived upon the earth. Folks, throw that away for a little nice time. Folks, throw that away for a little money. Some throw it away for women, for drugs, for alcohol, for all kinds of reasons. And our world today is messed up because man loves pleasure. We are pleasure seekers. Instead of turning to God and appreciating what God has done in our behalf. Oh no. We prefer to enjoy the pleasures of sin that last only for a season. So some enjoy it for 20 years. Some for 30 years. Some for 50 some for a hundred, but what is that compared to a thousand years in heaven? Think about it. But Satan knows what he has missed out on. And Satan will do everything to deceive the world so that no one could enjoy heaven. So we are saying that there is going to be a final judgment. And so this judgment will take place after the end of that 1,000 years that we refer to as the millennium. And so in the book of Revelation chapter 20, verses 11 to 15, it gives a description as to what will take place at that time. Bearing in mind God's faithful people will already be in heaven. Enjoying or would have enjoyed the thousand years. Then Revelation 20 tells us in verse 13 onwards. That the sea will give up the dead. These are the wicked dead now. The graves will give up the dead. And death. And hell itself would be cast into the lake of fire. This lake of fire was prepared not for human beings. But I tell you, if we choose to follow Jesus Christ, we shall not escape. We cannot do a single thing to help our brother there right now. But today, if you hear... His voice. The Bible says, Harden not your heart. Hell, according to Matthew 25, 41, was not created for you and for me. It was made for Satan and his angels. And that is why Jesus endured the shame of the cross. Imagine those he came to save was mocking him, was beating him, was saying all kinds of things against him, ridiculing him. But he looked beyond his suffering and understand that there are sinful human beings who need to be rescued from the clutches of sin and Satan. And so he endured it all. But at the end of it, Satan, sin, sinners, and death itself would be finished with all would be cast in the lake of fire. Satan who is the root cause of sin and death, 
would be totally destroyed with his angels. Hell's fire will neither leave root nor branches according to Malachi chapter 1 and verse 4. Satan, who is the root cause, would be totally destroyed. The branches are those who willingly choose to follow Satan and his evil angels. All would be destroyed. God's people at that time would be in a new Jerusalem safe in the arms of Jesus. My friends, there an eternity without sin is now ready to begin. And it is my prayer that as this moment is ushered in, and everyone here today would be able to say, Lo, this is my God. We have waited for him. Everyone here today would have made their calling and election show because the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 4, as I bring this home, that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. We may cry today. We are in pain today. We are hurting today. Death is not easy. It comes with a, a very strong sting. But one day, the Bible tells me, death will lose its sting. Oh yes, the redeemed will shout, O oh, grave, where is thy victory? My friends, there will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain, because all these things would be passed away. Jesus will make good on his promises. We have to choose exactly what we want. God says, I've placed before you life and death. Choose. You choose. I pray by the grace of God that we will all choose life because the death that the Bible is speaking about here now is not this death that all of us will die. But those who die without Christ will experience the second death. That's the final judgment when the wicked will be destroyed in the lake of fire. I pray that none of us would experience that. But today, if you have not committed your heart to Jesus Christ, that you will listen to the still small voice speaking to your hearts and give your life to him today. Some of us think that we have time, that we would live to grow old and we would enjoy what we have labored so hard for in this life. And we would enjoy our children and our grandchildren. And we would go to the beach and we would relax and have fun. We do not know. The Bible says, today. Today is all that we have. I pray by God's grace that we will all make the best use of today. May God bless you. We now move back to a few items. So we now have the family tribute. 
And after that, we'll have the eulogy, and then we'll have the prayer of comfort. Good afternoon, everyone. And as we say goodbye to our dear departed brother, we just want to sing this song. It's a very um, known song to many, and we hope that it in some way uplifts us so that we can live better lives for Jesus. Oh, 
gentlemen, pleasant good afternoon to you. And on behalf of the Robertson, the Webb, the MAP family, I just want to say thank you for
coming to share these moments with us as we say farewell to our dear departed brother. Um, just before I give you a synopsis of the eulogy, I just ask my nephew to say a few words. And I'll urge him, please, um, don't let us cry today. Good afternoon once more, church. Um, Kendall Starkey, Bap Bap, call him whatever you want. But he's my uncle, and to be honest with you, he's one of my favorite uncle. Many of them, but he's here with in my heart. However, we grew up as kids together, play together, eat from the same pot, pot together. So we would have known each other very well. Stark, he was a man, he don't play. You could talk and laugh, but please don't touch him. If you touch him, he says simply like this, please don't hit me, I'm not playing. And he's very serious. And if you touch him again, probably receive something after. However, Starkey took me several places. I mean, he was there, as I said, like a brother, an uncle. He just named it a father as well, even though that we that close in age. I can recall the very first I went to school without learning anything at Marika Secondary School was because of Starkey. And I'm serious, and you may wonder why. At that time, they used to have a um, scout. So they were having something down in Bisham School. And we went there. I don't know how many of you would have been drinking at that time and turned Christians today. But you would have heard about Steel Bottom and Tyson. Steel Bottom is rum, and beer, rum with beer. And Tyson is a Guinness and rum. And I had some good upper punch because Tyson knocked me out. I went to school and I slept all day. I could not have stayed on my eyes. My mother will give me a good whip into my backside for that. And if I don't speak today, she doesn't know about it either. <laughs> so it's a little bit of confession. However, the very first day and the only day I walked from town, and I, I'm sure Gregory, who's sitting back there, would remember as well, was because of Starkey. At that time, each and every year after inter school sports, TC is the place to be. And we are always hearing about Touch Entertainment Center. So yes, kids, we all go on there. We drink, but guess what? To get back home, no taxi and running, no van, so no taxi. No, no, no taxi fare. So we walk from town. You know where uh, Vic will come up, like Tongue Hill? So we say, you know what? We're going up Tongue Hill. That's, that's a very far shortcut. When we reach out where Ace was, formerly Ace is where the um, polyclinic is now. There was a part of a mango tree used to be there. So therefore, we get something to eat there. We stone mango and we walk from there. Get to Fountain Gap, we get some water so we cool them. And we join it on home. However, I can recall me, Gregory, and Robert, we went one day to the mountain so we're going to hunt for manico. So we had a jug. I'm sorry, I'm in front. We had a jug. So Robert say, if a tiger cat come, what he would do? So Robert run up and he hold the jug like this. And when he let go, Stark he was chopping the coconut. The kind of thing Stark he let behind here. When we went home, our deceased mother, grandmother, asked what happened. Got us to tell a lie. Said Starkey Fallon and Bambo, you know what's, what, what's taking place there. You know? However, Starkey, we used to call him Gargabod. I don't know if you all can remember. And there's a simple reason for that. It doesn't matter how far out a mango is or primrose on a limb. Remember, you stay on the ground, Gargabod will get that and show that for you. So that's the reason why you end up with the name Gargabod. 
However, he was a very good climber as well. Because he would climb coconut tree. I don't know how he do it. But he just do it literally. And when he get up there, you don't know where he would get a knife or a cutlass. And he would start drinking and dropping shells for you. And he's only learned to climb, then you can't drink. But he won't let you leave there without having any coconut though. And I'll make it short anyway. The very last thing I gave to my uncle was coconut to Arthur. The Sunday he fell ill, went to the hospital, went to the medical health center. I tell her, I say, I was up, I said, um, I don't know if I'll be sleeping when you get back, but whatever it is, please call me and let me know. She said he would need coconut water and whatever else. The very next day, I make sure he got two bottles of coconut water from me. And that was it for him. I, before, I mean, I, I've seen his body, like, literally start to deteriorate bit by bit, and he was so quiet, and he get even more humble. So, I don't want to break down, I'll break anybody down. See you guys. Take care. Stark, you will meet again, okay, brother? May your soul rest in peace. Yes, sir. For, for a moment there, I thought I might as well say, my brother, continue with the eulogy because you're doing a, a mighty job. And so I'll, I'll try not to be repetitive, but, you know, sometimes, as um, they would say, when it's nice, you got to do it twice. And when it's sweet, you got to repeat. So, here began it. Life is but a stopping place. A pause in what to be. A resting place along the road to sweet eternity. We all have different journeys, different paths along the way. We all were meant to learn some things, but never meant to stay. Our destination is a place far greater than we know. For some, the journey is quicker. For some, the journey is slow. And the journey finally ends. We claim a great reward and find an everlasting peace together with the Lord. On August the 21st, 1974, a baby boy was added to the Robertson, Map, and Webb family, born to Beryl Webb and John Robertson, both of whom are deceased. His name was Kendall John Robertson. But to many, he was known as Bob Marley, Starkey, Bab Bab, and Mag Magabud. He was the ninth of ten children to the Union. Yes, yes. Um, we won't try that today, okay? Yes. He had his preschooling by teacher Miriam Edwards preschool right here in Irisham. And for those of us who are too young to know or to remember, her school was located at the time where our cousin Fleggy now lives. Yes, and then later it went out to the cemetery area. Yes, so he attended preschool in there, and later he went on to the Ivisham Metalist Primary, where he acquired his primary education and also his woodworking skills. After leaving school, he worked with Mr. Raphael Joseph, now deceased, to further develop his skills. The work from his hands can be seen on many buildings around St. Vincent. But more recent, though, is the shop in Riley. When our father was no longer able to run the shop, he took it over and reconstructed it too. Yes, he was a good carpenter, a good mason. Indeed, 
he was a good tradesman. He was also an excellent farmer. And sometimes when I visit Riley, seeing that I am now residing in Richland Park, we will often have that chat. Starkey, boy, the amount of lands we have, you guys can live comfortably. You just need to walk together. Yes, he will agree with me. But we know the rest is history. My sister, Caroline, and for those of you who may not know Caroline, Caroline, could you just wave so that others can see you? All right. Yes, my sister Caroline recalls that he was so good at woodwork while at school and boasts of a solving tray that he made for her, which she still uses. My brother worked as a conductor. And being the calm dude with his contagious smile always got the attention of the girls. Yes, the van name was Bargain to begin with and was later changed to Jerome. I remember one day I was in Little Tokyo and the van pulled up in Little Tokyo and the crowd that was there trying to get into this small van. I don't know the reason why, if it was because of the conductor or the driver or the ride was just comfortable, but they always want to get into Jerome. And Starkey would just open the door and stand aside and say, all oh, go on, help by yourself. Yes, he was like that. Nothing bothers him at all. So Starkey fell in love with a young girl. Kimon Kimijan, and they produce his lone child. Lovely, beautiful, charming Kellyan. Yes, he absolutely loves and adores her to his final breath. My brother was an excellent provider slash supplier. And let me explain. My nephew a while ago started the process. So I'm just going to pick up where he left off. Now, whenever the fruits were in season, one can be assured that there will be some coming to you. Whether it be mangoes, plum rolls, apples, whatever it is, my brother will make sure that he bring home some. I was blessed by what he, he brought home and what he shared. I hope you are too. Now, this is the reason why he was given the name Gagabod. And my nephew alluded to it. This guy basically, because he was slim he has he had little weight so this boy will climb to the extremes of the trees to pick the fruits and mind you you know the extreme has always the best the sweetest the prettiest and so when the goodies came home we know that they were the best. Right, Smiley? Yes, ma'am. Um, for, for those of us, that's us well. But for me, that's Smiley. Yeah. My brother was also an excellent marble pitcher and top maker. And man, did he get in trouble for that. You can just imagine that my brother coming home from school with missing buttons 
not because a child pulled on his shirt, but because he had to go and play button tip. So at home, there were shirts and skirts with missing buttons. My brother, my brother's kindness, generosity, and caring nature can be attested to by many. Starkey had fun hanging with the boys. Whether it was playing dominoes, playing cricket in the road, and I'm sure he will be missed. As one of them put it, and I quote, don't care what fights broke out in the shop or outside and police involved, Starkey will say, boy, me not see nothing. <laughs> My sister Icy shared one memory that will forever resonate with her. She recalled that mommy was about to hand out a good beating to Mali, as he was also called back then. So she instructed him to kneel in front of her. And ladies and gentlemen, this was the, the known position for disciplining all of Beryl's children and grandchildren. And we all know the reason why. Yes, she was very short in stature. And so in order for her to have access to your back, yes, you have to kneel before her. Yes. So all of us had our fair share, I, I think, except one. Yes, and um, to God be the glory for that. So while Starkey was there kneeling before our mom, he started out singing this song. I'm nobody's child. <laughs> I don't know if many of us remember that song, but I certainly didn't until I see mentioned it. Yes, he started singing that song. And you know what happened next? It melted my mother's heart. And so she couldn't she couldn't hit him or beat him anymore. In fact, I see we call her bursting out into emotional laughter. Because the boy was singing sweetly. And also, the lyrics of the song touch her. Yes, I'm nobody's child. Starkey was no ordinary child. Just bear with me, I only have a, a few more slides left. Yes, my brother stopped being his true self sometime earlier this year, and we wanted to know why. He started losing weight, so we were concerned. And at this time, I just want to pause to say thank you to my brothers and sisters, relatives, and friends, all who would have contributed towards assisting Starkey before his illness, during his illness, and even after his death. It's always good to give thanks. Yes, after seeing the doctor, he was diagnosed as a diabetic. And I have known several diabetics all over St. Vincent. So I say, well, you know, we just put him on a good diet, let him reduce his sugar intake, drink some water, exercise, all these things. And the guy will bounce back because it's just diabetes. We can live with that. But ladies and gentlemen, to 
all this me. In March this year, he was diagnosed with malignant tumor. And ladies and gentlemen, my little world stopped. For many days, for many days, I lived in denial until the reality finally hits home. He had numerous, we, he had a number of scheduled appointments to remove the malignant goat. However, due to several medical complications, the surgery was continually deferred. During his final week on earth, we had prayer sessions with him and they were deep and personal. So yes, he had time to talk to God for himself. On Thursday, the third, our brother in his very quiet manner, the manner in which he lived, he died peacefully at the hospital after taking a bath. So he went he left us very clean. But he's gone. He left behind his daughter and grandson, his four brothers and five sisters. So we are now nine instead of ten. He also left behind many nieces and nephews, cousins, and other relatives and friends, too numerous to mention. Sleep on, my brother. May your soul rest in peace. Amen. Such a great joy and pleasure listening to the eulogy of a wonderful brother, father, grandfather, friend. It's so nice that he has spent so many years with us. And I give God the glory for the life that he spent with us. I'll invite the family members to stand as we have a prayer of comfort on your behalf. Okay, the entire congregation almost. So I won't invite you to come forward. Just stay where you are and we'll offer prayer. Let's pray together. Great God of this vast universe, we bow before your presence at this time. We thankful heart for the life of a brother that you have lent unto us. Father, we ask, O oh God, that you would come divinely close to us at this time. Forgive us for our many sins. Cleanse us, Lord, and make us clean so that as we offer our petition to you at this time, that from heaven you would hear us. We ask, O oh God, that you would be with the family at this time. I'm so thankful, Lord, that I've been blessed by their coming together to sing this wonderful hymn of praise to you. All their life, you have been faithful. Help, Lord, that this experience would resonate in their hearts and that they would continue to unite together in love. But most of all, help, Lord, that they would dedicate their life and service to you. Very thankful, Lord, that as we listen to the message of hope, very thankful that you die a death on Calvary's cross 
so that our debt cannot be eternal. But if we live faithfully and well, we we'll look forward for the day when you would come and call your people. And all of us that are here can be numbered among the saints if we live faithfully and well. I pray, God, that you abide with the family. Unite them in fellowship. Bring them comfort. Bring them hope, dear Heavenly Father. We realize at this time that they are grieving, but help them to know that you are the resurrection and the life. And that at the end, you'll be able to restore life unto those that have departed from this life. I pray, God, that you may be with the children, the, the daughter, the grandchild. Pray, God, that they would live to know you as their Savior. And they would live in hope of knowing that if they accept you as Lord and Savior, that they would rise in the false resurrection. All of us, Lord, have this desire. Our aim is to be with you when you come the second time. So I pray, Lord, that all of us would dedicate our lives to you so that we can live in full service to you. So when you, can, when you come the second time, all of us would be able to hear from you, well done, good and faithful servant. Continue to remain with the family. Help that they would not be separated. But as they have lost their loved ones, they would know that they have a comforter in Jesus Christ. Continue to surround them with your love. Continue to shelter them under your protective arms. Provide for them and keep them, Lord, as the apple of your eyes. Continue to be with us, be with us all, dear Father, as we celebrate in this service. And help of God that all of us would know that if we live faithfully and well, you will be able to save us when you shall come. Help, Lord, that we will continue to look to you, we will trust you, amidst the trial and the challenges and debt that is among us realize that one day it will be no more. Continue to guide us. Continue to keep us by your grace, we pray. And save us when you shall come. It's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all stand as we bring the curtain down and the service this evening. We're going to get our voice and sing this. Part in him, I know not why God wants to speak. The last song and the sweet.
direction. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for what transpired in your house today. We thank you, God, for the many who came from far and from there uh, to just give wishes and to say their part, whether in song, in hymns, or in speeches, to the family of God. Uh, we thank you, God, for your spoken words. Uh, we thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit that being here with us. Uh, we thank you, God, for the many blessings that we receive from thy hand, even now. Oh God, may you continue to comfort us with your love and with your grace and with your mercy. And even now as you're about to go to the, uh, the final place of internment, oh God. And may the Holy Spirit take us safely, oh God. And may everything be done according to your will and in order. And may we continue to give you thanks and praise and honor we pray in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, just allow us the platform to pass out and then the coffin, the casket, and the family members.
All right, let's pray. Let's just have some silence. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for traveling mercies, for bringing us safely to the site of interment. We pray, O oh God, that you will be with the rest of the proceedings, that you will continue to be with uh, the family members, and may your name be glorified even through this ceremony. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You could go ahead and... I can see the face properly. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth, yes, said the spirits, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow after them. Band could play something now. Hello. When peace like a river. On our program sheet. When peace like a river. When peace hey, wait for the band. like a river. Wait for the band. Thank you. Can I get your pizza? Can I get your pizza? Hey, sir, come on, move! As much as it has pleased Almighty God in His love and wisdom 
to permit our dear brother Kendall Robertson to fall asleep in Christ. We do tenderly commit his body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in show and certain hope of a joyful resurrection to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What his glorious appearing shall change the body of our humiliation that it may be made like unto the glorious body according to the mighty walking whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. No crying. All right. Go ahead, no go crying. Pull. Pull. I said no crying. No problem. Everybody get to the earth. No crying.
so we just want to have our final prayer and we'll ask Elder Noel to give us that prayer. Let's all bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for the life of our dear brother. We pray, O oh God, that as he rests in peace, we pray, O oh God, that your presence would one day awaken him on the last trumpet song, when the first trumpet song. We pray, Lord, that he will be among the saints. It is our desire that he would raise up to see you face to face. Mm -hmm. Continue to be with all of us there, Father, as we await your second return. Help that we would live in love and unity so that we are in fellowship, we can be with each other until the day you return. Yeah. Continue to guide us and save us at last when you shall come. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Up to Krung. Okay, let's go.
Big family around here, please. Oh, it's on there. Thank <laughs> you. 